Well, there he is, and uh, opportunist, yes, lucky no for Alessandro De Marchi. He took his chance when he realised that Hezidal, after the crash, was not coming back. The latest time check, Graham, what have you got on the Hezidal? Well, he's actually still with uh, Dupont. We've got sh shop in between at 50 seconds from De Marchi, but uh, Hezidal's now 1 minute 23 behind. Well, there is shop down there. As we look down from the helicopter, he's still on his own. He's being chased by uh, Hezidal who's in company with Dupont, who's the first to be dropped from the four front runners. That approximately, well, the leader is approximately two and a half kilometres still in front of the main pack. There is a climb to the finish. It's not that steep, uh, but it will dumb the legs a little bit. And uh, I must say that this has been a, an excellent uh, performance by DeMarchi. He was really, he got the big tick in our book of the four men in the breakaway because of the final climb. He's riding his fifth Grand Tour, this man, he's never won a race in a Grand Tour and uh, he finished uh, in the Tour de France, we saw his best stage finish there was a fifth place he has finished second on one stage of the Giro d'Italia uh, two years ago, but this will be the big one I don't think anybody's going to reach him, he's 5.3 kilometres very shortly beyond the last climb of the day, in fact I think he's beginning to start it right now and he's going on to it just over three minutes and, and in all frankness, well done, because this is a man who's been in front of our television cameras in every major race this year, King of the Mountain, the Dauphiné, a precursor to the Tour de France, a daily on the attack through the high mountains of the Tour with no reward. And this is the peloton now we're looking at here at the back. But as I was saying, he won in Rasul, stage eight of the Dauphiné last year. His only ever win, De Marchi. And we went to Rasul this year. You may recall it was the the Polish cyclist winning there, Rafael Mijka, who went on to win the King of the Mountains of the Tour de France, first Polish man to do that. The peloton, for me, have given up. Yeah, they, they did try for a while. It was pretty much the Lampre team made it a little bit by uh, the trek racing, but they didn't really make that much of an impression even when they were chasing. And uh, a while back, uh, they did give up completely, but they have gone back to the front now, but it's all a little bit too late. I guess the story of the day is the crash to one of the favourites, Chris Froome, who began his career as a star by finishing second a few years ago in the Vuelta de España. Since then, he's finished fourth overall. He fell off early on today, was over a minute behind. He got back. Well, when our camera shows you the head of that peloton again, you might catch sight of him because he's riding right at the front of the peloton now with the British champion and his teammate, Peter Kenyuk. Now... Is there any adrenaline left down there in Ryder Hazardal? Four kilometres to cross the gap. They're certainly going to catch up with the second place man on the road, Johan Schopp of IAM Cycling. There's the leader. The last check we've got, Graham, there's still a spread of over a minute there, isn't there? Yes, uh, d definitely. I think uh, Shop's more coming back to those two rather than uh, the strength of the other two. But uh, Hazardal must be really. Uh, must be really disappointed with his day. I mean, he got in this breakaway today after a couple of disappointing days and uh, and has uh, fell foul of a, a Barala sort of innocuous crash, really, on a sort of, on a, just a, a slippy bend. It's not all good news. This is Rigoberto who ran there and he doesn't look at all happy. Bit of a surprise position for him to be on this climb. This is 4% this gradient, fairly consistent all the way up and you can see just peeping in the left of our picture, that is Chris Froome. He wears a white jersey as leader of the combine competition. That means the best place rider in all of the competitions overall when they come together. Now, Hezidal here. They've caught up with their shop. Hezidal knows he's not going to have many friends here. Dupont isn't strong enough. We saw that. We must presume, too, that shop has cracked as well. This man has hurt him. He gave him the opportunity to go with him, but there was no answer. They're the three chasers. Now we pan down the long road here. It's a long road. You can't close that in two kilometres. So they're going to fight out second place. And uh, it may be a consolation prize for Ryder Hezdal. Vasil Kirienka is the rider in black on the left here. He's always the pacemaker whenever he can be for Sky. He's looking after, again, I have to say, a wounded team leader in... Uh, Chris Froome has just thrown that uh, bottle off, I think it was. But at least he's come up to the front. Safe place to be if you've got the strength. Up here to the race leader, Alejandro Valverde. 
DeMarkey just having a quick look back there, taking the opportunity to uh, have a look round, just make sure he's okay, but he knows he's won already. Well, that says it all. We're approximately one mile from the finish, and they're already congratulating him on his ride. This time it's for him. It'll be only the second win of his career, but he knows now they're not going to cross the gap. It's impossible. He's over two and a half, three kilometres ahead of the main chase, and he's got more than a minute now plus on the three riders he left behind in the melee after Rider, fell, uh, Rider Hejdal fell off. This is the peloton. They're organising themselves, but they're not interested anymore. This day they've been beaten, but they're all not worried about the overall position of De Marquis because he's too far behind overall. At 27 minutes, 43 seconds, and he might improve by a couple of minutes with a bit of luck by the finish today. Yeah, well, if you'd have looked at this stage before the well to start, you would have picked this uh, stage out for uh, another rider who's riding in the Cannondale kit. Perfect finish for Sagan, really, but uh, he's not on form, and uh, it's his teammate that's gone on to win the stage, so uh, a fantastic victory for him. Well, it's something got over the last few kilometres as a lap of honour here for Dimarchi. We saw him in action so much in the lead in the Tour de France. By this stage of every time he attacked, he was going backwards, but not today. Dimarchi is at one kilometre from the finishing line now. He has nobody to fear now except a flat tyre. And he's got to cross the line to win the stage, of course, as uh, the one kilometre rule doesn't stop the results across the line. He only saves time. Looking now at the peloton. This is Sipsev, who's come up here. Everybody fanning out. There are one or two sprinters left, but most sprinters have had another bad day out in the sun. Yeah, I think Michael Matthews is where it fairly well placed. So There's a good opportunity for him to pick up a few points in the points jersey competition. And David Cole was in trouble on the climb. He's been in trouble earlier on as well because he crashed earlier on. I think he was involved in the same crash as Chris Froome which also took out Santa Ramita, Oliver Green Edge losing a rider today, the first man to abandon the tour, reportedly with a broken finger from the team. But let's give this man his due glory. Professional since 2010, the only win came in France in Rissoul in June 2013. His first Welter Espana, and it's going to be a stage win for him on the seventh day of the race. He should savour it. He's been a real attacking rider, voted the most aggressive rider in the Tour de France and never once got a chance of winning the day. Today, he has had that chance. He broke away in a group of four after an hour of racing at very high speed, nearly 50 kilometres covered in the hour. Then he got away and then, because of the crash, he took his chance. It wasn't an advantage. It was just well taken. Number one for Alessandro De Marchi, for a team that next year, under this guise, will be out of the World Tour because they are merging with Garmin Sharp. This is for them. Average speed of the day, Graham, 42 kilometres now, and this man responsible for most of it. Yeah, no, it's a great stage win. Um, I think uh, we possibly expected to see... Uh, a sprint today of, uh, of a peloton with some of the stronger sprinters, maybe the people like Michael Matthews, maybe a, a Gilbert or a Pizzato, but it wasn't to be. It's the first time a breakaway has managed to stay away and uh, and, and a great victory for De Marchi. Let's go back up to the second place sprint. This is Ryder Hezidal coming up now. Can he finish off for second? He was very unlucky to fall, just sliding away on the dust of the road. Cost him, cost him a place at the front for the win. He was the favourite, but Demarque has won that. Ryder Hezidal, I think, is simply too strong for his two riders with him. He's just giving them all the strength he's got left, and have they got the strength to come by him? We'll find out imminently now, but Hezidal kicks again. Dupont and Shop. I don't think they've got the strength to pass each other. It's been a desperately long day for these riders. Look at the arm and the shoulder of the racing tuning of Hezidal. He went down heavily, look at his shorts. He's recovered though, and he's held them off, and he gets second place. He won't be happy with that, but I think that's a great performance. 
Well, this is the arrival of the peloton. They are not very far behind at all here, as this looks like Dan Martin kicking away from the field. This man is becoming a sprinter in the Vuelta. He is absolutely storming away from the field here. Can he hold on to the line? Gilbert as well, followed by Froome. Gilbert, oh, there's a crash behind. We just saw the rider go. We've cut back to the finish here. Well, Chris Froome is sending the message he is OK because he's spinning for a place here. Dan Martin and Gilbert on the line. Chris Froome just behind him. They're the riders who went down. I think it might be Bargill, actually. It is Bargill. And he fell very heavily right in the sprint. Well, we can see the sprint that uh, Dan Martin's gone for a long one and uh, Gilbert's in the danger and Froome's gone as well. And it just looks like Bargill's touched somebody's wheel and luckily he's the only rider that's fallen. Well, he was the only rider to fall and there he is now walking over the finishing line. I think he's a bit more disgusted with himself uh, than with the accident today. But we might see more of him in the mountains. By the time Bargiel limped over the line, Alessandro Di Marchi had already done the air kissing and claimed his winner's bouquet. Here's the result, a miserable second place for Ryder Hejadal ahead of his breakaway companions. And Chris Froome given a two-second gap over Alejandro Valverde and the rest of the contenders behind Philippe Gilbert and Dan Martin. In fact, at first, he was given the same time as Martin and Gilbert and three seconds over the field, which was clearly wrong. From Martin's wheel touching the line, there's an obvious second before Froome's does, and not much more than that between Froome's and the first man in the bunch, so he can perhaps count himself lucky to have been awarded two. Contador, Quintana and co were all in that bunch. Pete Kenyuk paid for his hard work, shepherding Froome to the front in the final stages, losing seven minutes. And Adam Yates lost eight minutes 18 after coming down in a crash of his own. John Dagenkolb was another casualty we didn't see go down. And we didn't see him come in either. The green jersey holder was 195th and last on the stage. Not badly hurt, though, and the same seemed to go for Chris Froome. Chris, are you OK? Yeah, I'm good, I'm yeah. good, I'm good. What happened with Chris? Crashed right in front of me, and I just had to. Like, I kind of stood it on the front wheel and like to avoid him, and, I'm not good, I'm okay, and then another guy crashed right behind me. So I mean, it's, yeah. I mean, everybody gets a run of luck eventually. What happened in the Froome crash? The, the roads are just so slippery today. The guys just like sliding out for no reason, and that's just what happened. He was just on a corner. He did exactly the same as everybody else. His front wheel was washed out. Sounds just like Ryder Hegedal's crash. He was creakiest of the lot onto the podium to take the prize for the day's most aggressive rider, there being no prize for the unluckiest. DeMarkey was in front of me, you know, I wasn't the first guy going through and, and uh, overestimating or getting it wrong, you know, that's normal, you know, sometimes, but I was following him and same speed and same corner and all of a sudden, I was just on the ground out of nowhere, just in a split second, so it sucks. <laughs> the guy ran over my bike, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> it's a little frustrating. Uh, you know, it definitely felt good today, and I think it was a lot of, <clears throat> obviously, adrenaline at that point, and you're so committed, but <clears throat> I can definitely feel it now, so I just have to assess the situation. Uh, this evening and see what, where we can go from here. Laid back or tranquilised, you be the judge. Either way, let's hope Ryder can start tomorrow. Alejandro Valverde, meanwhile, had a trouble-free day in the red jersey. He still has his lead of 15 seconds over his teammate Nairo Quintana and 18 on Alberto Contador. But Chris Froome, who started the day at 22 seconds down, is now at 20. Esteban Chavez, Joaquim Rodriguez, Robert Hezink and Fabio Aru are all where they were this morning. As is Dan Martin, at least in terms of his placing, but he sliced three seconds off his deficit with his morale-boosting sprint for the line. And Ryder Hegedal moves up six places after his day out front, although that will be little consolation for not being able to contest the stage win. Alessandro Di Marchi is just ahead of Adam Yates now. Pete Kenyuk is three places further back. David Miller is heading towards the hour mark behind the leader. And Luke Rowe is well beyond it in 191st place.